All right, I'm working on this Kubota today, zero turn. Uh, customer complaint was intermittently when he pulls the handles in, the engine would stall. He said sometimes it happens like all the time, other times it doesn't happen at all. It's really weird, comes and goes. And he already took the time to replace these switches and he thought he had it because one of them uh there was actually an updated part number and the dealer said they'd had some problems with them and they redesigned them so it didn't fix it and it's been happening more and more so he brought it to me and the first thing that i do i listen very carefully to the customer complaint especially if it's a good customer which this guy is he's been coming to me for years and um, he's very analytical and pays attention and so there's a wealth of knowledge there the second thing is you need to figure out how these machines work before you try and find out what's wrong with them. Um, and so there's a couple things that you have going on here. Basically, uh, you cannot start the car or the car. You can't start the mower if the PTO is engaged because they don't want the first thing you do to be turning on the blades. So that's one possible failure mode. The other thing, they won't let you start it if you have these engaged because they don't want the thing flying away the moment you start it. They won't let you start it without the emergency brake applied, and they won't let you start it if you're not in the seat. So you have like four safety interlocks is what we would call those. Now, once it's running, you can get up out of the seat if the e-brake is on. But if the e-brake is off, you can't get out of the seat. And when you have these engaged, like this, pulling the e-brake will stall it or getting up off the seat will stall it but the PTO won't do anything because obviously you're supposed to be able to mow and move these at the same time. So without ever looking at anything, I basically had it narrowed down to e-brake and seat. In fact, these switches, uh, basically these switches only tell the computer, well, there's not even a computer. These switches really only let the machine know what mode it's in. It doesn't actually do the killing. The killing is from something else, either the seat or the e-brake. So, I drove it around, messed with it a little bit, and I just kind of had a hunch that it was more in the seat than the e-brake. Um, primarily from experience, but secondarily because this seat gets a lot of movement. Um, you can see that they've put all sorts of adjustments in here to uh, let the user get more comfortable, and they're kind of loose and gnarly and ratty. So I popped up the seat. And almost immediately, I saw some wires that went from here to the seat switch, which had been crushed um, here or here or something like that. I also noticed, and I'll take you inside to show you. I also noticed that somebody had been in there before. And I knew that because I saw this zip tie. And I saw that they had zip tied this connector to the seat switch because they had broken this. So that's also a good sign. I also noticed... Uh, that of the four bolts that hold the seat frame to the machine, one of the nuts was missing. And so this whole thing was rattling and moving more than the manufacturers probably expected it to. And so I took the cushion off of the seat. You can see how nasty it gets in here. Um, and basically when you sit on the cushion, they're hoping that your weight pushes down on this metal plate. And then that metal plate pushes on this button. And I just used an ohm meter really quick to find out that um, when the switch is on, the first and the fourth are connected and the second and the third are connected. And then when you take the switch off, it goes open circuit. Now, here's that wire that I found pinched. Now I messed with this and wiggled it like crazy and I actually couldn't get the machine to act up. So I don't know if it was actually this or the switch, but I talked to this customer, he's a grown man like me, and he decided that um, if I do find a problem with the seat switch, he's happy for me to bypass it. So I shorted the white and black and the red and yellow. So now uh, the machine always thinks that he's in the seat and uh, we bypassed that switch so it doesn't give him any trouble. If you have an issue with that, that's fine, but we're grown men around here. We know how to be safe. And so we make our own decisions. You can do what you like. So hopefully that helps somebody. There's really only two things that can cause that, and that's an, e, that's an emergency brake switch sticking on, or more likely, a um, um, th th switches tend to fail in the off position more than the on position. I mean, they can fail both ways, but uh, I would say experience has shown me it's more often. So instead of something sporadically turning on, it's more likely that something is sporadically turning off, and that's 
um, open circuits and high resistance are a little bit more common than shorts because to get a short, not only does the insulation have to be missing off of this, but then it has to touch something. And that does happen, of course, but it doesn't happen as often as a loose terminal end or corrosion in a circuit because if you get that little cut, that's a prerequisite for a short, that little cut lets in corrosion and moisture, and that typically leads to high resistance before it leads to a short. So hopefully that's helpful to someone. Um, and I just thought I would just show this really quick. This is my soldering uh, gun that I use uh, when I have to go to a machine versus this one where I do it at the bench. This thing is awesome. It's made by Weller. Absolutely fantastic. Keep your tips clean, but it's an awesome tool to have to take to a machine. All right, folks, I hope that helps somebody out fix their machine. I also hope it helps someone think about uh, the repair logic of listening to the customer complaint, getting to know the machine, figuring out what are possible issues before you start ripping things apart and diagnosing something. All right, take care. Inside this little spring for the seat, um, you basically have this spring-loaded piece that moves with the position of the seat, and you see these two little contacts here on the side. And what they do is they ride up and down these gold plates. You had four pins. And so basically as it went up, it would connect those two and those two. And you can see the corrosion on this one. It's not super bad, um, but what I suspect is that a combination of this white wire being pinched and having high resistance and corrosion combined with some of the corrosion there um, led to the occasional high resistance that was interpreted as an open, which was interpreted as the customer wasn't in the seat. One thing is even if you have a lot of material still intact in here, um, you start to get corrosion and uh, it starts to work its way up the wire. And so, um, yeah, even if, even if the wire still feels like it's intact electrically, there might be a lot of resistance in there. So this is always an important sign to take note of.